Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. God, we worship you. We reverence you this Amen. morning. I want to just thank God for the opportunity and the privilege given to me once again to be able to minister his word. It has been a challenging time. For nearly eight weeks, I've had some very bad cough and cold. Amen. And my voice has not been good. So I couldn't even minister. I couldn't even preach. I have not been able to pray effectively. But I want to thank God this morning that the, 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 the whatever it is has been broken. The snare has been broken over my life this morning. And I want to be able to minister to God's people in the name of Jesus. The sister who should have ministered this morning, unfortunately, didn't turn up. So the Spirit of the Lord just gave me the word. This was a word that was preached on the 13th of April 2000 by my bishop. And I'm going to give it a little bit of an extra twist. And then we will pray this morning in the name of Jesus. The title of the message is Transgenerational Idolatry. Transgenerational idolatry. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. What is transgenerational idolatry? I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah 31, verse 7. 
Isaiah 31, verse 7. We make idols every day, sometimes, consciously and unconsciously. In our hearts, we raise up an idolatry, you know, lifting somebody up instead of God. And Isaiah 31, 7 says, For in that day, every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Lord, have mercy. You know, we make mistakes all the time when we don't give the glory to God. That is lifting up an idol to somebody. We make mistakes when we cherish something physically more than we cherish God. We make mistakes when we don't pay our tithe. We don't give the money to God. That is an idol. Amen. These are all stumbling blocks that stand in the way of affecting our relationship and our work with God. And sometimes in these idols that we lift up, we leave generational curses for our children. Just like Sometimes our own family members, ancestors would have left a generational curse for us because of idols that they raised up hundreds and thousands of years ago. They raised up these idols and we are still reaping, excuse me, we are still reaping the consequences of those idols. We are still facing the challenges of those things that we are holding on to. I just want to encourage us today that what you sow is what you reap. Amen. And divine justice must be satisfied. Amen. We need to be continually confessing our sins of self and the sins of our ancestors. Because sometimes there are things that have a, 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 a time waiting for you. It's just hanging somewhere waiting. It's not as if it's a, a, a maybe it's, a, it's an idol that has been raised that says that when you get to the age of 50 or when you get to the age of 45, that is when this the oppression of this idol must manifest in the lives of your children or your grandchildren. There are things you have done that maybe it is age-related. So sometimes we always need to be doing spiritual checkup to make sure that we are not raising or maintaining idols that have been passed on to us from our ancestors. Maybe it is something that they said that said that, oh, you know, in a funny way, um,